What's going on everybody? Just wanted to start this video off with a little announcement. For those of you who don't know, I recently joined the team over at Madden Daily. So I will be collaborating with Pete, aka you guys know him as Lights Out, along with some of the other great guys that they have over on their team. Now, the content on this channel will not change at all. It'll be the same exact YouTube channel as it was before I joined the team. If anything, it might get a little better due to the fact that now I'll be collaborating with Lights, so we'll have a lot of great stuff to bring to you guys, not only on my channel, but also on his channel and for the website moving forward. So super excited about you know the value that we can bring to you guys and to the Madden community as a whole going into the future. Now for this video, I want to talk about Drini's defense and in particular his cover three sky press setup out of the dollar formation. Now it's a defense that's not seen very often and wasn't seen often throughout this tournament. A lot of people were running you know, the crossfire style blitzes, but he was mixing in crossfire along with this. So you got two three deep shells there. He was also missing, mixing in defenses such as spinner, such as DB fire two stuff like that. But the cover three definitely was one of his favorites. I think it ended up being his second most called play. As you can see here, 32 play calls, 5.94 yards per play and 11.27 yards per attempt. So not fantastic numbers, but where it really shined was that he got six sacks, one interception and two fumbles off of this defense. So basically a little over 28 percent of the time that he was calling this play more than one out of every four times he was either getting a sack that was putting his opponents in a hard down and distance situation or he was getting a turnover in the form of an interception or a fumble so it was very effective for him down the stretch and so i just wanted to kind of go ahead and talk about it a little bit right here playing spoto in that first round of the single elimination bracket and you're going to see drini actually runs this pretty standard you see the three-man rush the three deep shell forming and then he's got one guy in a spy so he's essentially dropping seven and rushing three and, and then the one spy obviously and what he does here is he actually ends up manning up the hitch receiver now spoto running bunch trail so you have to know the typical bunch trail setup they'll put this receiver right here on a hitch and then you have the corner route going in filling in behind it and then you can playmaker the hitch either left or right basically wherever you think uh the defense is vulnerable at and so Drini does a great job of recognizing the route combo, knowing it's bunch trail. You're going to see he shoots out towards the corner route, knows he has to cover it. Spoto goes with the playmaker on the hitch route, but because of the man-to-man -man defender, you see that's a tight window along with the QB spy. Spoto's going to have a really hard time fitting that in. The deep post route isn't a great read against cover three, obviously, because there's a lot of time for that safety in the middle third to go, go ahead, come up and undercut that route. So Spoto really has nowhere to go. Drini ends up sending the spy and Spoto takes a huge sack for a loss of eight and bringing him to a fourth down. So a little later in that same game, Drini versus Spoto, huge play for Spoto here, fourth and 11, already down 14, needs to convert. And this is where Drini gets really creative with his cover three sky press setup. And this is kind of what he was doing for the majority of the tournament. A lot of players will run those cover two style setups like DB fire two, it was really popular early on with 3-4 under OLB strike 2. And what they would do is they would drop that middle linebacker into a deep third. Well, what Drini started doing was Drini was dropping this linebacker into a deep third and taking the original player in a deep third and basically using him as a utility player, manning him up on whoever he thought his opponent might be looking for on that play. So you're going to see, in this case, Drini ends up manning up this defender on that receiver and he actually ends up manning up the other safety on the outside receiver so he's got two of the bunch side receivers manned up and you're gonna see Spoto goes with a vertical setup here and it's really just there's there's nothing open right here right uh, Spoto puts the running back out on an out route going across but Drini doesn't care if he throws that because it's fourth and 11 everything over the middle is locked up you've got the B receivers manned up along with the fact that he's gonna be running into this zone right here the A receivers manned up along with the fact that you know you got the middle linebacker dropping back in that deep third the RB receiver is covered right here on the side, and then the X receiver is going to be running over the middle of the field into that big crowd. Very tough for Spoto to make a read here. Drini does a great job usering right here. Spoto doesn't want to throw an inside pass lead right here to the RB receiver because it looks like Drini's running in that direction, but then Drini does a great job of stopping on the spot and noticing that X receiver is going to be coming over the middle, and he goes ahead, strafes up, and basically just sits there and dares Spoto to throw it. Spoto can't make a read ends up getting sacked and turning the ball over on downs. 
So right here in his matchup against Prodigy, 4th and 11th semifinals, big play actually early on in the game, Drini already up 7-0, and you're going to see something very similar. So Drini is going to go at the snap of the ball, you're going to see the middle linebacker drops back into the deep third, and what Drini did was Drini ended up cross-manning this RB receiver on this PA post shot play, which is a popular play out of the wide trips formation, and it was really good last year. This receiver does a great job of running this route that gets all the way across the field and kind of gets behind those zones. But Drini did a good job, actually manned him up. And you're going to see uh, the man-to-man -man defender actually gets beat really badly. But Drini does a good job knowing where he needs to be, using the route over the middle that's actually coming in behind that deep crosser, knowing that he has the zones on the left side of the field to take care of the deep crosser. Prodigy ends up having to force it because it's 4th and 11, and Drini ends up getting the interception from that cover 3 look. Now, last but not least, I did want to show you guys a case where Spoto actually ended up beating this cover 3 look, and he actually did it very smartly, making a key adjustment, very small adjustment, but definitely key in this setup, in that basically, whenever you see bunch trail, a lot of the times, what people will do is they'll go ahead and max protect, and it'll be a 3-man route like I talked about earlier. You'll have the playmaker hitch right here, you have the corner route, and then you have the backside deep post. And that's usually the route combo. In this case, last time, if you remember, on the bunch trail setup, Drini was able to sit on that corner route outside and basically not have to worry about the deep post against cover three, and he manned up Jarvis Landry on the playmaker hitch. Well, in this case, Spoto makes the small adjustment of putting Ingram on an in route, and so you're going to see that distracts Drini's user. He can't leave the in route. Since he's already in the area and it would get wide open if he does, he just sits on it. Spoto actually stays patient in the pocket, makes the right read, and you're going to see he ends up hitting Doug Baldwin. But you see the in route developing over the middle. Drini has to stick with it, unlike last time where there was no in route, right? So Drini was able just to shoot to the outside immediately as soon as the play started. And Spoto's going to go ahead, hit the out or hit the corner route rather for a nice game, even though Drini ended up manning it up. Uh, that was a nice read and nice play by Spoto. So that's going to be it for this video, guys. As always, thank you so much for watching. Definitely leave a comment and let me know of anything that you saw that you would like to get broken down from uh, the Madden Challenge Tournament. And until next time, guys, take it easy.